Hello students, this is your professor, Dr. Mink. Welcome to another exciting lecture. <laughs> In this lecture, we will cover the materials for chapter six. Procedures and functions are the topics we'll be covering. And as, um, as always, I'll be breaking this chapter into two audio lectures, um, part one and part two. So with no further ado, let's get started. Here's the topics for chapter six. In the first half, we're going to focus a lot of attention on procedures and functions. Procedures are, uh, well, event handlers are a type of procedure. They perform a task. And they're similar to functions, but different because a function is a series of statements that performs a task and is called from the program and where it's called from, which is called the call to the function, it returns a specific value. I don't want to get into too much detail right at this point, but we're going to drill down on that and you'll understand that. And we'll get into debugging and um, stepping into over and out of procedures and functions. Um, and then we'll finish with a, uh, a problem solving uh, activity, uh, building the bagel and coffee price calculator application. But that will be in the second uh, lecture for chapter six. So let's get started first with procedures and functions. As I alluded to earlier, procedure is a collection of statements that performs a specific task. And event handlers are one type of procedure. A function, on the other hand, is like a procedure. It is a collection of statements that, that that statements that perform a specific task, but it also returns a value from where it's called. So we've worked with a few visual basic functions that were built into the programming language, such as cint and is numeric. cint takes a, um, a string that, uh, and it converts it to an integer, and is numeric determines whether or not a string is numeric. So um, a method can be either a procedure or a function. So hang on, let's, let's talk about this a little further. But the first thing we're going to focus on is defining procedures and drilling down on the, um, the specifics of that particular uh, programming structure. So if you're <clears throat> trying to match up the reading with the presentation, the audio lecture. Uh, the next uh, section we're going to cover is from section 6.1, your textbook. And as you might have guessed it, we're going to cover procedures. An event handler <clears throat> is a special type of procedure that is executed when a specific event from the grass graphical user interface is um, triggered. And um, so that part of Visual Basic can be, is also categorized or described as event-driven programming. And <clears throat> so, so a mouse click on a specific, <clears throat> excuse me, control would uh, trigger a specific event handler and the tasks or code in that event handler is um, executed. There are also general purpose procedures that are not necessarily triggered by events, but they're triggered by statements in other procedures. And um, I'm just going to post a video of tutorial 6-1 running, and it has an event handler procedure, and within that event handler procedure, it calls another procedure. And that procedure is not an event handler, it's just a procedure. It doesn't return a value, it just executes a series of statements and then finishes. And in this example, the event handler will call, will, will, will perform a few tasks. I think it's output, I don't have it in front of me. Generates output calls this other procedure, which generates output from that procedure, and then it ends, and then it returns to the procedure from which it was called. 
procedures are useful because they help simplify and modularize the code by breaking it into smaller manageable pieces, uh, subtasks. And it's useful for dividing a program into a set of logical tasks. So you can, instead of having a ton of code in one procedure, you could break it down to specific subtasks. And those subtasks can be calls to other procedures. So I'm going to ask you to stop or pause this uh, audio lecture right now and take a look at tutorial 6-1, which is in the timeline session. This slide shows the, uh, the general format for declaring a procedure. You've got, uh, and those items in um, brackets are optional. So you've got the access specifier, typically public or private. Sub stands for subroutine. That is a, um, that's a keyword. So you have to have sub and you have to have end sub and the statements are the body of the procedure. Now your parameter list, the procedure I showed you in uh, tutorial 6-1 did not have a parameter list, but that's not always the case. You can pass variables from uh, one function or one procedure to another, uh, the value, or um, you can even pass a reference variable, but that's way beyond um, where we are right now. So it, let's just say you could pass a list of variables to the sub procedure. Um, and to the parameter in the sub procedure. That's a special variable that receives a value that's being passed. And I'll, I'll show you in tutorial 6-2 how to uh, uh, write a procedure. Next up is the content from chapter 6.2, passing arguments to procedures. There's gonna be instances where you wanna pass either a value or a pointer I'm going to explain that. You're going to pass the value stored in a variable or the location of the variable to a procedure. And I'm going to show you how to do that right now and explain call by value, call by reference parameters. Arguments are passed to a procedure during the procedure's call. Um, and they're passed to the parameters of that procedure uh, in the procedure definition. So in this example, we're passing the text property of text input to the cint function, which will convert it to an int, we'll try to convert it, and it will return an integer. So we say, that we pass text input dot text as an argument to the cint procedure. The two ways we can pass an argument to a procedure are by value and by reference. When you pass it by value, you're actually copying the value stored in the argument, and then you're pasting it into the parameter in the argument, I'm sorry, the procedure's definition. That's called by value. So you cannot change the value from where it's been called. By reference, you're pa actually passing a pointer, which is a complex um, data structure. You're passing a pointer, or the address of the variable. And that means anything that you do to the parameter in the body of the procedure actually changes the original argument back in the procedure or event handler from which it was called. So the first thing I want to explain is the process of passing arguments by value. So in this rectangular box, we have a function call, 
display value, and we're passing the number five, okay? We're passing the value five into the formal parameter int number. So this first line is the function prototype. It's a sub, its name is display value, and it has one parameter. And that parameter is a bival, that's a keyword, int number as integer. Okay, so we're passing the value five, or if we had put a variable in here that had a value, well, it would have to have a value. We'd be passing the value stored in that variable to int number. And then what we have here is the body of this procedure. Um, yeah, of this procedure, display value. And it simply displays a value in a message box. And it takes int number to string in a message box. So int number is declared as an integer argument. Okay. Storage location for int number is created by the procedure. In other words, it's declared as part of the procedure. A value five in this case must be supplied and is copied into the storage location for int number. I don't really particularly care for this example. I'd prefer that we had a variable here and the variable had a value in it. In that particular case, the value stored in that variable would be copied into int number. The variable would not be affected at all by the procedure or anything that the procedure did to int number. Uh, take a look at tutorial 6-3 to see a demonstration on passing arguments. A procedure can pass multiple arguments and they are separated by commas. And if they're all value arguments or value parameters, pass call by value parameters, value of the first argument is copied to the first parameter, the value of the second argument is passed to the second parameter, etc. So in this particular example, you have a call to show sum, and we're passing two arguments, int value one and int value two. So the value stored in int value one is copied by value into int num1 parameter. Int value 2, the value stored in int value 2 is copied by value into int number 2, the parameter named int number 2. Now remember, anything that we do to int number 1 and int number 2 within the procedure has no effect on int value 1 and int value 2 because they were passed by value. In a, um, in a minute, I'm going to show you more about passing arguments by reference, which is a totally different methodology. Just stay tuned. The most typical way that you pass an argument to a procedure is by value. And that means that a new storage location is created for the procedure. And the value from the, uh, the value stored in the argument is passed or copied to the new storage location with the new name, for, uh, the name of the parameter that was created for the procedure. So as I mentioned, this, the, the, the defining characteristic is the new storage location gets a copy of the value, not the actual value or the variable. So any changes uh, in the value are made to the copy and the calling procedure won't see those changes. Call by reference parameters or passing arguments by reference does allow you to make changes to the actual variable um, in the calling procedure. So when you pass an argument by reference, you're actually passing a pointer to the memory location of the variable passed by reference. You can't pass a value such as five or six or seven 
you have to pass a variable which has been declared, has a storage location with a memory address. Okay, and it said that the procedure points to the argument's original storage location or it references. Any changes made to the parameter in the procedure are actually made to the original value because there's only one storage location. Okay, the reference parameter in the procedure that's called is actually not a new memory location, it's a pointer to the argument's original storage location. And after this slide, I'd like you to pause this uh, audio lecture and go view tutorial 6.4. And that will demonstrate the difference between a by value and a by reference uh, argument or parameter, I should say. Well, the argument is passed by reference or by value to the value or reference parameter in the procedure. So let's summarize the difference between by value and by reference arguments. When you pass the argument by value, okay, it does not change the value of int number, okay? You cannot, within the uh, sub that the argument is passed to, change the actual value where it was declared. If it's passed by value, you're copying the value into the by value parameter of the procedure. And the original variable remains safeguarded. There's a firewall, if you will. <laughs> Okay, you cannot change that even if you pass int number to the function, or I'm sorry, to the procedure. Um, you cannot change the value stored in int number You because you copy its value and to the new space declared or allocated within the procedure for the by value parameter. Now, when you create a by value, I'm sorry, by reference parameter, there is no new space allocated. So passing the argument to a by reference parameter just passes a pointer back to the original memory location of the variable. So anything we do to the by reference parameter in the procedure, any changes we make, if we assign it a new value, uh, that value actually gets assigned to the argument that was passed because it said that the by reference parameter points to the argument. Okay, it doesn't have its own memory location. It's a pointer to the original memory location. Now, once again, we're, we're I'm going to stop this lecture here because we've just covered a major topic, well, two major topics, by value and by reference. And by reference is very abstract, and I teach by reference in um, actually three different programming languages this semester. So um, pointers are a, are a very, very complex topic that we've just tackled, and I want to make sure that you understand this. So I'm going to stop the audio lecture here, and I'm going to assign um, a project for you to do, and I expect there to be questions, so I'm asking you to please post those questions in the general answers and question, general questions and answers forum so that we could all benefit from the answers I provide. Okay? Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed this lecture. Um, have a great day.